This is the deposition of Florence Puana in the matter of United States of America versus Catherine Kealoha et al. We are located at Office of the U.S. Marshal Service, 300 Alamoana Boulevard, Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Greg Wills, Video Specialist for Certified Legal Video Services. Will the counselor please state your names? Colin McDonald for the United States. I'm also joined by Assistant United States Attorney Joseph Orobono, Michael Wheat, and also present for the United States are FBI Supervisory Special Agent Matthew McDonald, FBI Special Agents Nicole Valliers and Laura Salazar, and FBI Forensic Accountant Loris Otsuka. The counsel for the defense could please state their names for the record at this time. Good morning. Cynthia Kagiwara on behalf of Catherine K. Aloha. Ms. K. Aloha is also present with me. Rustin Barbie appearing with Louis K. Aloha. He's present. Bernie Bervar on behalf of Derek Hahn, who is present. Randy Hironaka on behalf of Bobby Wing. He is present as well. Lars Isaacson for Gordon Shearer. You see, he was also present. And sir, if you could also announce your presence. Anthony Kwan, associates with Cynthia Kagiwara. Thank you. Today is April 30th, 2019. We are on the record at 9.27 a.m. Will the court reporter please swear in the deponent? Can I have you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Good morning. Could you please state your name for the record? My name is Florence Puana. Mrs. Puana, thank you for being with us and for taking the time to be with us today. I'm Colin McDonald, an Assistant United States Attorney, and I'll begin the questioning today. And then once I'm finished with my questions, then the Defense Council will be able to have a chance to ask you some questions. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you understand that you're here today to give testimony in the case of United States versus Kealoha? Yes, I am. How are you feeling today? A little nervous. <laughs> sure. Okay. Are you are you on any medications currently? Uh, just I am, but not anything that uh, it's over the counter. Okay, do they affect your ability to remember events at all in any way? No, nothing at all. Okay. Do you have any questions for me about the deposition process? No, I'll just ask you, answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, is there any reason why you can't give your best and most accurate testimony today? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. So let's start with some background. Let's talk a little bit about you, Mrs. Puana, okay? Yes. All right, what is your date of birth? My, I was born on August 24, 1919. And where did you grow up? In Makawal, Maui. Where did you attend school? Makawal Public School. And how far did you go in school there? To the eighth grade. Did you have any more formal education after the eighth grade? No, I taught myself. How did you go about doing that? Uh, my teacher gave me the ninth grade books, and I taught myself uh, with the help of my sisters. Now, at some point, did you get married? Yes, I did. What year did you get married? April 23rd, 1938. And what was your husband's name? My husband's name was John Kenaleo Puana, Sr. Now, Mrs. Puana, where do you currently live right now? 1015 Aoloa Place, apartment 224, Ka Kailua, Hawaii. Okay, in Ka Kailua? In Kailua. I see, okay. And, and, and that's on Oahu? Is that it's, on Oahu? It's in Oahu. Got it. When did you move from Maui to Oahu? On June on 1941. Mrs. Puana, do you have any children? Yes, I do. How many? I have nine children, and I lost my firstborn on past January 1980. I'm very sorry. 
Is Gerard Puana your youngest? Yes, he is. Did you raise all your children at home? Yes, I did. Was that a full-time job? It was. I enjoyed it. Do you have any grandchildren or great-grandchildren? I have great, 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 great. Three greats? Yes. Wow. I'm going to show you what's been marked as government's exhibit 1-15. Do you recognize the people in that photograph? Yes, I do. Who are they? That, that is my great granddaughter, Miley Louise, and her husband, Bobby Nguyen. Bobby Nguyen? Yes. Okay. So these two people were married? Yes, they were married. Okay. Government would move to admit government has given 1 15 into evidence at this time. Do you know someone named Catherine K. Aloha? Yes, I do. Who is she? She is my granddaughter. Mrs. Pawana, I'm showing you what's been marked as Government's Exhibit 1-18. Do you recognize the people in this photograph? That is my granddaughter, Kathy Kealoha, and her husband, Police Chief Louis Kealoha. Okay, at this time the government moves to the admission of Government's Exhibit 1-18. Objection, Rule 403, if you're going to do an identification, there's better ways to do it today. Uh, reflecting who's present in the room. Your objection is noticed. I would just note if there could be, please, no speaking objections during today's deposition. Rule 403, prejudice outweighs probative value. Thank you. The objection is noted. Mrs. Puana, what did Louis K. Aloha do for work? He is the police chief. And he was the police chief. And what did Catherine do for work? He was, she was my attorney. Okay, did she work as an attorney for other people as well? Yes, she did. Did Catherine go to school to be an attorney? Oh, yes, she did. She, she went to... Um, Let me ask Chaminade. you this. Chaminade. To Chaminade, okay. Now, did you have a close relationship with Catherine as she was growing up? Yes, I did. How would you describe your relationship? She was a loving, loving, gentle person, and I trusted her. Mrs. Puana, after your children were raised, did you work outside of the home? Yes, I did. Where did you work? I worked at Manalani Hospital, and then I worked at Star of the Sea Church for 30, 32 years, years. And when did you stop working there? I was 38. You worked there for 32 years? Yes, I worked for 32 years. Okay. I'd like to talk to you now about your family home on Neoy Place, okay? Yes. Okay. Did you and your family live in a home on Neoy Place? Yes. 3934 Neoy Place. When approximately did you move to that house? Um, in oh, it's been so long. Um, I think he was in 19. I, really, I can't remember right now. Did you live in that home for a long time? Yes, I did. Did you raise your children in that home? Yes. Okay. Not, not all of them, but uh, when I brought my son, Matthias Kanoa, from the hospital, I brought him to my home. And he is like, I say he's, He 
get memories. Who built your Neoy Place home? My husband, who was, uh, he was a master plumber, and his associates, he worked with uh, Teruya Electric <coughs> and Jack Akimoto, who was the construction. So all three of them worked in my home. And they worked in other homes for Joe Powell and other people. Okay. So Do those you, are the ones that built my home. Okay, thank you. Do you still live in that home? No, I don't. Why not? Because I lost my home to the uh, reverse mortgage and I moved because I decided that when I finally got the bills, they were outrageous. And I said I wanted to sell my home, and I did. So you mentioned a reverse mortgage. So let's talk about that some, okay? Okay. okay. In October of 2009, around there, did you get a reverse mortgage on your Neoy Place home? Yes, I did. What is your understanding of how a reverse mortgage works? Well, I had a call from someone in the mainland, and they told me that I could live there as long as I live. And um, that's about all that I really understood. There was no one to talk to me about it and how to go about it. Now, did you, did you come up with the idea of getting the reverse mortgage? Yes, I did. Was it your idea or was it someone else's idea? No, it was mine because I wanted it. I wanted to get it for my son, Gerard, because he helped me a lot after my husband died. And and he really loved that home because his son was born in that home. So, so the purpose of getting the reverse mortgage was to help Gerard purchase a, a yeah. home for himself? And, and Catherine told me that she could help me to help Gerard get the condominium if I would get her the amount of money and she would pay off the reverse mortgage and she would uh, take care of her bills and refinance her home. But she promised me she paid off, she would pay off the reverse mortgage. Okay, so I want to take that maybe one step at a time. Okay. okay. So who came to you with the idea of the reverse mortgage? Catherine did. Okay, and is that Catherine K. Aloha? Yes. Okay. Now, when she came to you with the idea of the reverse mortgage, did you know what a reverse mortgage was at that point in time? No, I did not. Okay. What did she say to you about a reverse mortgage? She said that, what I said, she would, if I would get her the money, she would get the money that she needed for the reverse mortgage and to refinance her home and pay off her bills, that she could do that by helping me to get Gerard the, apart the, the, river, the apartment. Okay. And did that plan make sense to you? Well, it did at first because she promised that she would help me. And I, I believed her and I said, okay, because my son Gerard would not sign the paper because he had eight siblings and he thought it was not was fair for him to sign that paper. So it took me some time and, and finally I decided I wanted to help him because he was the one that really helped me a lot after my husband died. And so I did that. I signed the paper. Okay. 
did Catherine K. Aloha tell you how the reverse mortgage would be paid off? She said she would pay off the reverse mortgage and then Gerard would pay her monthly for the remaining. Okay. And did Catherine K. Aloha say how long it would take for her to pay off the mortgage? She said it would take three months, not more than six months. Did you believe her? Yes, I did. Why did you believe her? Because I did not know anything about the reverse mortgage or how it worked. Was she also your granddaughter? Yes, she was. Mrs. Puana, if you knew that the reverse mortgage was not going to be paid off in three to six months, would you have agreed to sign the reverse no, mortgage? I would not. Why not? Because I wouldn't know how, how it worked. At the beginning, I heard that someone called from the mainland and, and they talked to me and they told me all these things about reverse mortgage and I was so confused and so finally I said I would trust my granddaughter and sign it. Who did you, who were you relying on to give you confidence to say yes to the reverse mortgage? Catherine, because she, she said she knew how it worked and I only, she said to trust her. She said, Grandma, don't worry. She said, I'm your attorney, and, I'll, and you can trust me. You mentioned that Catherine said that she was your attorney. Is that right? Well, when, when she became my attorney. Okay, so let's talk about that. Okay. During the process of getting the reverse mortgage, did Catherine K. Aloha become your attorney? Well, she brought me this paper. And she said, I want, it, uh, I want you to sign this paper <clears throat> and have it uh, checked, uh, have it uh, notarized. And she said, then I can be your attorney and I can take care of the reverse mortgage. I'm showing you, Mrs. Pawana, what's marked as Government's Exhibit 1-1. Is this that document that Catherine gave to you to be your attorney? The durable power of attorney. That's the one. This is that document? Yes, it is. And did you sign this document on the final page? Yes, that's my signature. Okay, the government moves to admit government's exhibit 1-1 at this time. On what date, Mrs. Puana, on what date did you sign this document? I believe it's right above your signature on the third page. On seventh day of January 19. And then the date spills into the next line on the left. Is that 2009? Right here, 2009? Yes. Thank you. So what was the purpose of this document? That was for to be my attorney and to have the reverse mortgage. Um, I signed for the reverse mortgage. Okay, thank you. And I'm showing you what's marked as Government's Exhibit 1-2. Does this have, is this titled the Second Amendment of the Florence M. Pawana Trust? Is that the title of this document? Yes. Okay. And you, your signature is on the second page of this document? Yes, it is. Okay. The United States moves to admit Government's Exhibit 1-2 at this time. Mrs. Puan, I'd like to talk to you now about your bank, okay? Yes. What bank do you use? Honolulu Federal Credit Union. 
Did you use Bank of Hawaii as your personal bank account? No, I did not. During the course of getting the reverse mortgage, did Catherine K. Aloha ask you to open a joint bank account? No, she didn't. She gave me this paper and I said, now, Kathy, what am I signing this paper for? And she said, Grandma, I told you to trust me. She said, this is for the reverse mortgage. <coughs> so I signed it. Showing you what's marked as Government's Exhibit 1-3. Is this the paper that Catherine asked you to sign and that you signed? Yes. And is your signature there in the middle of this page? Yes, it is. Okay, the government moves to admit government's exhibit 1-3. What, if anything, did Catherine tell you about this document? She said if I signed that paper, that it would be for the reverse mortgage. Okay. So that's the reason why I signed it. Did you understand that this was opening a joint bank account? No, I did not. Did you have your own personal bank account at the time when this was signed? Yes, I did. Was there any reason why you couldn't use your own personal bank account? Well, I, I didn't know how it worked. So I just trusted her. And she said to trust her. So that's why I signed out those papers. Did Catherine ever give you any documentation about any bank account? No, she did not. Let's talk now about the reverse mortgage finalizing, okay? Yes. So in, in October of 2009, did the reverse mortgage finalize? It was at the Central Pacific Bank, I think. We went to Central Pacific Loan Bank, and we had it finalized. And, uh, and how much money, approximately, did you get from the reverse mortgage? I did not get any money. So you didn't ever see any of that money? No, I did okay. not. Did you obtain some money to then help Gerard purchase the condo? I didn't get any money because she kept telling me that the, uh, she said the home, she paid for the home, she paid for the reverse mortgage and she would have the rest of the money for, to refinance her home. And then Gerard and her would work out where Gerard would pay her monthly. Okay. How much was the reverse mortgage? It was um, five. I know it was five. If I remember, five, seven, six. I remember those numbers, five, seven, six. So. Was that 576,000? Uh, yeah, I remember those, uh, that, that amount. Can you not quite remember, Florence? Not, not exactly. Okay. But okay. I do remember the five, seven, six. I really didn't know. Would seeing the declaration that you have previously signed, would that help refresh your memory as to the amount from the reverse mortgage? Yes, I think. Okay. I'm showing you what's been marked as government's exhibit 1-16, marked for identification as just 1-16. Uh, 1 And I'll direct your attention to paragraph 7, paragraph 7 of this document. Go ahead and please read that. And then when your memory is refreshed as to the amount, Mrs. Puana. In October of 2000. Objection. So Mrs. Reading. Thank you. 
Mrs. Puana. Yeah. Please read it. And then once you're done reading it, then look up, back up at me. Uh -huh. And then if your memory is refreshed, then you can tell me how much the okay. reverse mortgage was, please, okay? Okay. Where's that now? Seven. In. Five hundred. <coughs> Five hundred. Thirty four thousand. Five, no. Five hundred. Thirty four thousand. Five hundred and ninety six. Dollars in one cent. Okay. So, Mrs. Puana, does two. that does, does does reading your declaration does that refresh your memory? Yes. And and so, how much was the reverse mortgage? Five hundred thirty-seven thousand and fifty. The cents are okay. That's okay. Thank you. Was Gerard? able to purchase the condo? Well, he finally did. And he kept, he moved into that apartment. Okay. No, he, he lived with me for a while. And then he finally went to the apartment because the people wanted to move out. So he went there and he was paying the money to but who? She to, to the who? Up, up to the, the owner of the the home. Okay. Where did the rest of the money from the reverse mortgage go? I don't know. It just came when I finally got. Well, I finally got my mail. I finally got my mail, came to my home, and, and when I saw all the interest that they paid every month, I decided to sell my home, because I wasn't getting my mail. So after, after the reverse mortgage finalized, yes. and Gerard got his condo, at that point in time, what was your understanding for how the reverse mortgage was going to be paid off? I, I thought she would help Gerard, as she promised. And who is she? To Catherine. And was she, she had told you that she was going to pay off the reverse mortgage? She said she would pay it off, and we kept calling her, and there was no way to get a hold of her. I tried and tried. Let me rephrase the question, Mrs. Puana. Did you receive statements from MetLife? Yes. Okay. And what did those statements say? They said not a bill. Okay. I'm showing you what's marked as government's exhibit 1-19. Are these the statements from MetLife? Well, I finally got it. And when I got that, when I got that, that's when I decided to sell my home. So Mrs. Puana, this, is this the reverse mortgage statements that you got from, from MetLife after the f reverse mortgage closed? Yes. Okay. Government moves to admit government's exhibit 1-19 at this time. That's the uh, clarification council. That's the um, exhibit that came in yesterday in the email. Correct. Mrs. Puana, directing your attention to the bottom of the page. Yes. 
where it talks about the balance of the loan. Okay, was the balance on the loan going up or down? Up. It was going way up. Okay. Now, after receiving these statements, did you seek to confirm with Catherine K. Aloha that she was paying off the reverse mortgage? I couldn't get a hold of her. Did you ever have any conversations with her about paying off the reverse mortgage? Yes, I did. And she kept telling me it was, she came to my home, finally came to my home after I tried and tried to get a hold of her. And she finally came to her home. And there was my daughter, Carolyn, and my son, Gerard, and I, we were there and she came. And she said, now, Catherine, did you pay off the reverse mortgage? And she was angry and she said, I told you guys that the reverse mortgage is paid off. But she got the mail going to her. You said that Catherine Kealoha was angry? Yes, because we kept asking her the same question. And, and, what was her an and what was the question that you kept asking her? If the reverse mortgage was paid off. And what was her answer to that question? She always said, yes, it is paid off. Did you believe her? Well, I believed her, but I didn't have any proof. Now, you mentioned that she had the mail changed, is that yeah. right? Yeah. So at some point, did you stop receiving those MetLife statements in the mail? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you what's marked as Government's Exhibit 1-5. Do you see your name at the top of this document? Yes, it's printed. Okay. And is this a communication from MetLife? Yes. And what's the title of this document? Please take your time. It's annual. It's annual company cooperation. Is it annual, annual occupancy yes. certificate? Yes. Okay. And this document you signed? towards the bottom of the page. You see your signature there? Yes. Okay. Government moves to admit uh, Government's Exhibit 1-5 at this time. Mrs. Puana, do you see some print handwriting at the top of this document? <coughs> What does that print handwriting say? It says a mailing, mailing address at 43, 48. Objection, Why a lie Avenue. Is that your address? No, it's not. Have you ever been to that address? No. Do you recognize that address? Well, she, I don't, because she didn't live there, but she probably had her mail going there. Who, who do you mean when you say she? Catherine. That handwritten print, is that your print? No, it's not. Do you know who that, whose print that is? <coughs> I've never seen her print, so I can't say whose print it is. I've never seen her print. In October of 2010, were you able to get mail at your house at 3934 Nioi? No. Well, just any mail. You, were you getting any mail at your house? Did you have a mailbox at the house? Yes, I did. And were you receiving other mail at your Nioi Place home? Yes. Okay. Is there any reason why you would need 
a different mailing address in October of 2010? Well, she told me that my daughter was taking my mail. <coughs> who, who told you that? Catherine Carroll said that my daughter Carolyn was taking my mail. Was that so, true? Why should she? She had no reason. At the bottom of this page, it indicates that Catherine K. Aloha was given permission to discuss your account with MetLife. Whose idea was it to give Catherine K. Aloha permission to discuss your account with MetLife? Not my. Did Catherine K. Aloha also talk to you about opening a P.O. box? She did. How did that come about? She invited my son, Gerard, and I to go to Othadros to have lunch. And then she took me over to UPS store and had and uh, she took my food lane card and my um, food lane card and my driver's license and gave it to them. And she told me to sign this papers that, that the, her mail, uh, my mail, would go to her box because on her way home from work she would pick it up and that would be easier to get ma so she can work on my papers. I'm showing you government's exhibit 1-7. Is this the paper that Catherine had you sign? Where is that? <clears throat> yes, that's my signature. And this is the document to open the P.O. box with UPS, is that right? Yes, that is. Okay, the government moves to admit government exhibit 1-7 at this time. Uh, voir dire, please. We're not going to engage in voir dire at this time. This document is also accompanied by a certificate of authenticity from the UPS store that's marked as Government Exhibit 1-7A. Mrs. Puana, directing your attention to the box 7A, do you see some print handwriting in those boxes? Yes, I see it. Is that your handwriting? No. Was yes. this paper given to you by Catherine? No, she didn't give me any papers after that. But it all, all her mail, all my mail went to her box. Okay. Do you know whose print handwriting that is on this piece of paper? I wouldn't know because I have never seen her print. There's a phone number that's listed on Government's Exhibit 1-7, and it's 808-739-2121. Is that your phone number? No. My number is 732-5477. And directing your attention to Box 3A on this document, it says, address to be used for delivery uh, towards the top of the document there and it says 43 objection <coughs> counsel is testifying for the witness florence i'll read what's written there and you tell me if it's accurate okay yeah okay in box 3a on this document it says 4348 Wailai 
Avenue, number 829. Did I read that right? Yes. I Did you ever know. pick up mail from that place? No. Did you have a key to pick up mail from that place? No. If you wanted to pick up mail from that place, would you know how to do it? No. So were you receiving any more statements in your mailbox at 3934 Neoy? No. Mrs. Puana, did you later learn that the reverse mortgage had not been paid off? Yes, I got a letter. I got a letter to my home stating that all that um, the, the money I paid and all the, the interest I had to pay and that's when I decided to sell my home because I was not going to lose my home because it wasn't my fault because I didn't have any mail until I got that where they changed to Devol. So you mentioned Devol? Yes. Okay. I'm showing you what's marked as Government's Exhibit 1-8. Is this the letter that you got from Devol? Yes, I finally got that letter at my address. Okay, United States moves to admit Governance Exhibit 1-8. What is, who is this letter addressed to? M mortgageur. Does mortgageur. It, does it say dear mortgageur? Yes. And that was to me. And I, I decided I have a mortgage in the home. What is the date on this letter? It's at the very top of the document. February. February 23rd, 2011. Is that an 11 or a 12? A 12. It's a little hard to see, is it? Yeah. Did this letter cause you concern? Yes. Why was that? Because I know, I know that if I wouldn't do something about it, that I would lose my home. And rather than losing my home, I decided to sell it. After receiving this letter in February of 2012, did you try to contact your granddaughter, Catherine K. Aloha, about your mortgage? I could never get hold of her. And I called my, her mother, and I, I told her mother I was very concerned. And she said, why are you concerned? And I said, I need this money, because I promised my husband that in time, after I'm gone, I was going to sell the house and split the money among my children. And she said, do not call here anymore, because Kathy, uh, Kathy is very busy. So that's the response I got. How many times did you try to call Catherine K. Aloha? So many times. I called her and all I could hear is the strumming of an ukulele. That's what you would hear as the ringtone? Yes. I tried so, 
and I was so afraid that some was, something was going on, and I, I had no choice, so I decided to sell my own. After not being able to reach Catherine Kaloha on the phone, did you ultimately decide to write her a letter? Yes, I did. I had my daughter. I asked my daughter, um, Kehalani, to write it for me, and I would tell her <coughs> what to write. And she wrote the letter for me. Where was your daughter when she was writing this letter? At my home. Okay. Were you guys in the same room? Yes. How far apart were you from each other? Well, you are now, and I am here. Okay, so for the record, that's approximately three feet. Mrs. Puan, I'm showing you what sparked this government's exhibit 1-9. Is this the letter that you sent to Catherine K. Aloha? Yes. And is that your signature at the bottom of the letter? Yes, it is. Government moves to admit Exhibit 1-9 at this time. Objection. Request voir dire. There will no, be no voir dire during the direct examination of this witness. You can ask questions on cross-examination. Objection. I believe that the rules of federal civil procedure apply to this deposition, and we should be allowed to voir dire the witness. So your objection is noted for the record. Why did you write Catherine a letter? Because I wanted her. I wrote her this letter and tell her that I would like to talk to her and, you know, talk and uh, ask her why she did this to me. And I said, why don't you come and we can talk it over and maybe she can change her mind about certain things. And that I had that letter I received that letter. It wasn't a letter, it was, I don't know how many pages she wrote of it. So I'll ask you about that in, in one minute. Mrs. Puana, the final paragraph of this letter that you wrote to Catherine, you tell me if I'm reading this right. It says, I oh. am still willing to work this out with you. Did I read that right? Yes. And was that true? Yes. That's what I wrote to her and said. Now, when this letter was drafted uh -huh. by your daughter, did you have any documentation about what had happened? Well, because I, I found out that the mortgage wasn't paid and I was owing my home that money, I wanted to talk to her about it and see if we could get something straightened and we could, you know, do something about it. So and that's at, why I wrote that letter. And at this point in time, did you know what had happened to the rest of your money from the reverse mortgage? No, I did not. Did you know exactly how much money? When I got the letter from Deval, Okay. Then I decided that was too much. I couldn't do anything about it. Okay. After you sent this letter to Catherine, did Catherine write you a letter back? Yes. And how would you describe that letter? An angry letter, I would say. 
Why do you call it an angry letter? Because everything she wrote in there, she said she never, never cared for us. She wasn't our favorite people. And I took a lot of money from her. And it was like a 16 pages of it, I think. How did you feel when you got that letter? Very depressed, thinking that she told me that she would to trust her, that she would help me out. Mrs. Puana, I'm showing you what's marked as Government's Exhibit 1-10. Is this the letter response that you got back from Catherine Kealoha? Effective April the 9th. 2012, I... So let me ask you this, Mrs. Yeah. Puana. Is this, is this the letter that Catherine sent you back in response to your letter? I can hardly see this. It's a little hard to see? Yeah, it's very hard. See the top here? Whose name is at the top of this document? Catherine Taylor. And then is it addressed? Whose name is it addressed to? To the, to me. To and, you? And to my son, Gerard. And is there a date on this document? September 15th, 2012. And is there a title on this document? What's the title of this document? certificate um. so just below your name and address it said there it says response to the letter dated September 10 2012 did I read that right yes okay so is this this is this the letter that Catherine sent you in response yes Government moves to admit Government Exhibit 1 10 at this time. Mrs. Puana, directing you to paragraph 10 on the second page of this letter. And I'll read it and you tell me if I read it correctly. Okay. Catherine said, I have never, will never, or would never borrow, take, yeah. or even request to borrow any money from Florence Puana. Did yeah. I read that right? Yes. Yeah. Was Correct. that statement true or false? False. Absolutely false. Directing your attention to paragraph 17, which appears on page 3 of this exhibit. In the middle of that paragraph, 
it says this, I will seek the highest form of legal retribution against anyone and everyone who has written or verbally uttered these lies about me. Do you see that there? Yes. Had you said lies about Catherine? No, never. I trusted her. What did you understand Catherine to mean when she said she would seek the highest form of legal retribution <clears throat> against you? I don't know. I could never say that because one never knows how oh, she works. Are you an attorney? No, I am not. I wish I was. Is Catherine an attorney? Yes, she is. The last sentence in paragraph 17, Mrs. Puana, Catherine said this, they will rue the day that they decided to state these twisted lies. Did I read that right? Yes. That's what, exactly what she wrote. What did you understand her to mean when she said that you would rue the day? Well, in other words, she would be smarter and had She was smarter, but I would rule the day that she would do anything. She was, more or less, she was trying me out. Mrs. Puana, what did you do next after you got this letter? Well, I knew that she wasn't the person that I thought I knew and I <coughs> respected. So in what I, way in I, what way was she not the person that you thought she was? Because she wasn't doing the things I asked her to. She said over and over again that the mortgage is paid for, the reverse mortgage is paid for, and it was never poor paid. So the next thing I said, that I fired her as my, to be my attorney. Did, I, you, did you take steps to try to figure, that, figure out what happened with your reverse mortgage money? Oh yes, I did. I tried to, and that's when my daughter Okay, what she, she went on the, on the phone and she finally found out where that, the address was. Did you know that you had a joint account at the Bank of Hawaii with Catherine Kealoha? No, I did not. Did you eventually find that out? Yes, I did. Did you go to the Bank of Hawaii to get statements for that joint account? Yes, I did. And did you have to pay money to get those statements? Yes. How much money approximately did you have to pay for those statements? Two hundred and forty-three dollars, I think it was. Okay. And did you write a check? They, I wanted to write a check. And they said they don't accept checks. So my, my son Gerard had to go to the AP, ATM and get the money, cash money, to pay it. Okay. And so you paid for them? Yes. Did you get any bank statements then? Yes, I did. Okay. After you got those bank statements, did you learn what happened to your money? I did. And what happened to your money? She spent it all. Who is she? Catherine.
Catherine K. Aloha. She spent it all. Mrs. Pawana, I'm showing you what's marked as Government's Exhibit 1-13. The first page of this document has previously been admitted as Government's Exhibit 1-3. Mrs. Puana, are these the bank statements from your joint account with Catherine K. Aloha? Catherine's name and my name. So let me ask you this, Mrs. Puana. So your name and Catherine's name are on these statements? Yes. Okay. So the government would move to admit Government's Exhibit 1-13, which is also accompanied by a certificate of authenticity from the Bank of Hawaii. Mrs. Puana, did you have a card for this bank account? No, I didn't. Did you have a checkbook for no, this bank account? No, I did not. She told me it was for the reverse mortgage because I asked her, why am I signing this paper? I just said, Grandma, trust me. I am your attorney. This is for the reverse mortgage. So I signed it. Did you know how to access money in this account? No, I did not. I'm referring now to the statement period December 31st to January 31st, 2009 to 2010. This is the Bates number ending 24 in Government's Exhibit 1-13. Mrs. Puana, there's a purchase reflected on this page of $23,976.69 at the Sheraton Waikiki. Did you spend over $23,000 at the Sheraton Waikiki? No, I didn't. Do you know who did? Catherine did. That was for her husband's breakfast. If Catherine K. Aloha had come to you and said, Grandma, I want to spend $23,976.69 at the Sheraton Waikiki, would you have let her? I wouldn't have because I, I didn't have that kind of money. Turning to the next page. <coughs> Mrs. Puana, did you make any purchases from this account? No, I didn't. If you wanted to make a purchase from this account, account would you have been able to? I don't think so. I didn't have the card. Have you ever been to Disneyland? No. By the time you got these bank statements, was any of your money left? Yes, but it was very. That's why I decided to sell it because I would never, I, I would have lost my home. To, and I didn't want the bank to get it. 